In Luke chapter 5, we have the moment where Jesus has eaten with a bunch of society's most unpopular people. Jesus had just invited a tax collector called Levi to follow him. Tax collectors were really not very popular among their fellow Jews. Think of a job which you would be embarrassed to tell people that you did. Do you think of traffic wardens? Me too. Well, traffic wardens are national treasures compared to tax collectors. Why? Well, they were Jewish people who were so keen on making money that they started working for the Roman Empire, the people who ruled over the Jews. Jesus was different though. He didn't spit or swear or hit the, the tax collectors that he saw. No, he showed kindness towards them. In fact, he was a friend to them. And it wasn't just the tax collectors he did this to. He was a friend to prostitutes and children and, and to poor people and to the sick. The religious people were furious. How can you claim to be God? How can you claim to be special, to be holy and to spend time with people like that? And Jesus says this, those who are well have no need for a doctor. It's those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I love that this story is included in Luke's account of Jesus' life. The four accounts we have of Jesus' life all centre around the same person, but they're written about by four different men who have all been inspired by the Holy Spirit. In Colossians 4, which is later on in the New Testament, we read that Luke was a doctor. This makes a whole lot of sense because his account is full of healings and extra details about illnesses that just don't appear in the other accounts. And if you're listening today and if you feel like you're too bad for Jesus, if you feel that there's a stain on your record that not even he can cleanse, if you feel like you're not a good person, I've got a secret. Neither am I. None of the people that you meet in church are good people. No. But they have put their trust in the one good person, Jesus Christ. What difference does that make? Well, in the same way a doctor identifies the problem and performs a procedure in order to heal you, Jesus has identified a condition in us. It's one that isn't very rare. In fact, everyone gets it. But it's very serious and it ruins lives and eventually kills you. And it's called sin. And we tend to think of sin as just the, the bad things, the really bad things like murder and cheating on your husband or your wife. But the Bible tells us it's all the things, big and small, that uh, when we don't live up to God's amazing perfect standard. You see, God is the source of all life and sin is death. So every time and every day that we live in sin is a day closer to death. But not only has Jesus diagnosed us, but he performs a life-saving procedure on the cross. He stood in your place when God looked at all the things that we had done wrong and rightfully needed to punish those things. Jesus stood in our place. He is the doctor who lays down his life for his patients so that they can live. Why? Because he's good and he loves us. And he didn't stay dead, he rose again, showing that death has been defeated. And if you're a Christian today, you will follow one day too. So remember, in the same way as a doctor has no interest in the perfectly healthy, because they don't exist, Jesus is only interested in helping sinners. And that includes me, and that includes you too.